Hello, my friends. Another reflection for the heart and hopefully for the soul, the gateway to a loving God. And here I want to share with you a few thoughts about abandoned by those who should protect. What is that saying to your heart? It's probably saying a whole load of things to your, to your mind. I bet if you press the, the search button on your brain, your mind, your conscious mind, like the internet, you would come up with a whole load of interesting replies and answers. But let's Google God here and let us ask a loving God, the creator of all life, what is the divine saying through these words? I would like to read to you a reflection given in prayer from the Barefoot Galilean. You stand before me, adult tall, but deep inside the child small, feels lonely and unsure. Long buried memories surface to threaten your peace, a high price to pay for being you, abandoned by those who should protect, teddy clutched in hand, here you stand, knocking at the door of your heart, hoping to become a part of someone's life, confusion the only blanket of security, no surety of abode or faces kind, make out you didn't mind, brave is the cover of assumed independence as you grow, coping with inside hurt, with an outside smile, and all the while searching for love, but no one must know. In this series of Heart Reflections, we've been looking at spiritual wilderness, spiritual melancholy, the wounded heart, the abandoned heart, and you know, looking back on my life, I can see where I made so many mistakes, but I don't look on them anymore through my mind's eye and start bashing myself or whipping myself or putting on a dog chain and pulling on it till my pelvis bleeds, as we were instructed to do in the monastery. No, I try with God's help to come to my own personal issues, my regrets, my fears, my uncharitableness, through the eyes of love, which are found in my heart. And I try with God's help to see my life in a small spiritual devotion we call examine of conscience, where God's spirit guides us to look on the day, to reflect on the events of the day and to see have we fallen short in any way? Have we, are we guilty of unforgiveness, impetuosity, selfishness? What part did we play in alienating ourselves from a loving God or others? But today I am consciously aware that of all the divisions within God's family, many of these divisions have been caused by man's inhumanity to man in the name of God. And there's nothing more painful than to see brothers and sisters break away. We've had it in the Teo community where people come on board they offer their services, but what we have discovered, there was an agenda, and the agenda was to do it their way, not God's way. The agenda was to seek some form of notoriety on a bigger stage, and not in the simplicity of silence, in one's monastery without walls. But I can see why there's been so many divisions in the Christian church. 
because the church that Peter founded, the first apostle given the keys of the kingdom of God, despite his mistakes and denying Christ, within that church, there are groups of people who are so committed, who are so lovable and endearing, but there are others who came into God's service not because of love of God, but because of what the church could do for them in terms of positions of power. And what I found so interesting, but yet I found it disturbing, Eight years ago, when I was on the road, I was in Dublin, and I happened to meet a priest who came on board for support. And I asked him what inspired him to become a priest in the Catholic Church, because I detected an element, a strong element of ego, and very little reference to private prayer. And interestingly, he said, I don't believe in God. Well, you could have picked my face up off the floor. And I looked at him and he said, what's the matter with you? I said, I'm gobsmacked. I'm disturbed. You mean to say you entered the priesthood and you have no love of God? I said, why? He said, because it will serve my needs. I can become great, my family have influence, and they see me as a bishop, possibly a cardinal. Well, I took the smile off his face by saying, Dear brother, what is your understanding of Jesus being in service to the servants? Oh, he said, do you really believe that? I said, yes, I do. Well, it's utter bull. I said, no, it's not. So I could sense an argument building up and I just said, I really feel that God's family needs more than egotistically minded, self-centered people coming in to use God's riches to further their selfish aims. And we've seen it not just in the Catholic Church, we've seen it in Buddhism, I've seen it here with a a Buddhist monastery where the, the Lama in charge is so opposed to the wonderful holy man, the Dalai Lama. The young nuns and monks don't realize it, but he's burnt all the sacred texts. He's so ego-driven that the local community can't stand him, and that's so sad. But in the Church of God, in the Catholic Church, I have met some wonderful priests and nuns who are true servants of Christ. Look at Maximilian Kolbe, the Franciscan, who was in the death camp. And this Jewish man next to him, who was ready to be put in the gas chambers, was crying to him and he said, I have a wife and family. And Maximilian, he said, I will take your place and ask that you be set free. Look at Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Look at Gandhi, Corrie ten Boom, Martin Luther King, Archbishop Romero, great men, great apostles of love for God. So today we are aware that the division within God's family is twofold. One, from those who are ego-driven, who don't want to toe the party line, and who are really frustrated and want to make a name for themselves. Well, God go with them, because it's a downward spiral of ego, and their sins will find them out, and they will be publicly humiliated by God. But then there are the others, who, like me and many other monastics, and Third Order Franciscans in the Catholic Church who love God but whose face doesn't fit because we dare to embrace other beliefs. Because we dare to embrace the same God in brothers and sisters who are not Catholic Christian. 
we dare to be different and share a, a new interpretation of God's love. Or maybe it's our lifestyles. There are many brothers and sisters whose lifestyle is not compatible with the church's teaching and they're alienated from the face of the earth. That's why the Teo community is here, to offer them love and agape.